When people hear the word data, many times the first thing that comes to mind is a picture, something like a graph or uh, maybe a color-coded map. But there's no reason that you can't um, map data to some other sensory modality. Like you could imagine mapping data to a haptic glove and then feeling the pattern of the data on your hand. Mm -hmm. But in our case, we were interested in exploring the ways that sound could convey information, which immediately raises a question. Is it even possible for sound, by which I mean non-speech sound, to convey information? What you see again here is the journey that we talked about before, where we have the unfolded chain on one side and the folded proteins over there on the left. And let me actually turn this around by, uh, or let me actually simplify this a little bit, uh, because in the models that we build for, as educational tools, uh, these kinds of computer simulations you need to do, that sort of calculations are, are really on the complicated side. And so what we did is we basically just rep represented the protein as a string of beads, and there's two kinds of amino acids, the white ones and the dark ones and they interact with water molecules differently, which is what leads to the different kinds of motions. And the same kind of journey you just saw from a full computer calculation with all the atoms can actually take place in this simplified model. You have the extended protein on one side and then various disordered versions of the chain, and then eventually the chain forms this nice little hairpin, as we like to call it, uh, that is the folded state uh, of this. And let me actually take this picture and rotate it by 90 degrees, so the folded state here is at the bottom and the unfolded states are at the top. And that's actually what uh, an energy landscape, as we like to call it, of proteins looks like. So there's really only one folded state there, and there's a very large number of possible you know, configurations that corresponds to all the unfolded states of the protein. And all of these are higher in energy than the state that the protein uh, should fall into in order to be uh, folded. And, and Carla did a little bit of cleanup on this picture and organized the connections between the states to a little bit, bit more neatly using her Kima software that we were just listening to. So it, this is actually kind of the same picture again with the folded state at the bottom and then uh, the unfolded states at the top. And then the connect, connecting lines are the allowed transitions. So it turns out as a protein moves, it can't beam unlike Scotty. So you can't suddenly go from here to, to over there. You actually have to move through a series of steps right before you end up over there. And so that's why these purple lines don't connect all the possible states to all the other possible states. There's only certain connections that are allowed. And while the protein tries to fold, it basically follows those connections around this network. And so uh, I think I can actually run this.